brought to you by Copal. A Bloomberg UTV Pulse initiative. You're watching Bloomberg UTV. Hello and welcome to this very special presentation, a beginning of a series of episodes where we're going to be calling this uh, Artwise. It's a joint initiative between Copal and Bloomberg UTV. We're basically going to be focusing on the genesis of the art market. Is it a good place to invest? And various pros and cons, regulatory environments, investors, collectors, all and lots more questions to be answered over a series of episodes. Today, of course, we're going to kickstart it by telling you whether art as an investment tool is a worthy option or not. I have the lovely uh, Sarah Zaman, who's going to be my co-host through this entire journey. Sarah. Take it away. Yes, uh, you've made a great start. You've really put it across well what episode one is going to be all about of the special series Art Wise. Before much ado, let me introduce our set of panelists. We have with us Mr. Alok Nanavati, a very well known market analyst, a well established face in the market, also the director of Centrum. We also have with us in the studio Mr. Ranjeev Saluja. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. He's the owner of Pulse Technologies, which is a well known IT company, and he's just started investing in art. We also have with us Renu Modi, the director of Gallery Spas, who's always been very vocal about talking on issues related to art, collecting art. Really, everyone does know about her passion for art. But before we kickstart this discussion, for our viewers, let's play across a special story which tells us about how the art market stands in 2010. As world markets suffered through 2008 and 2009, the Indian art market witnessed a slump as well. But the year 2010 came with hope and promises. Modern masters managed to be the saving grace. And SH Raza broke all records that were ever known to Indian art. His painting titled Saurashtra was auctioned for a whopping $3.4 million at Christie's in London in June this year. 16 crore rupees to be precise. Saurashtra has made a big splash for obvious reasons. And that's okay. It's good, I think, in the sense that the reason for acquiring it certainly wasn't that it was going to be the highest priced Indian work of art. and It was just that it was a very important work of art. Auction houses are already beginning to show better results. And the masters like Hussein, Draza and Souza are more in demand than ever before. Indian contemporary art that dipped by 75% in 2009 is also showing some green shoots. The good news coming from artist Bharti K's latest auction which makes her the highest priced Indian woman artist. Her work title The Skin Speaks a Language Not Its Own fetched 7 crore rupees at Sotheby's in June this year. It's a life-size elephant cast in fiberglass covered in her signature bindis. That piece is extremely um, emotional for people. I think for two things, I mean, people relate to elephants, everybody loves elephants, but also Barty caught the elephant, the body language that she caught was a very moving, very sympathetic, almost, um, uh, it, it twisted people in certain ways. It seemed sad, but it also seemed at rest. It was a very complicated form that she made. The benchmark set by both Raza and Bharti may not necessarily indicate an upward swing for the entire Indian art market, but it surely is a much wanted boost to a market full of cautious buyers. Well, that's the art market as it stands as, as on date. Let's find out then uh, from our experts as to whether they believe art is a good investment tool after all or not. Uh, Ranjeev, you started investing in 2008 if I'm not mistaken, so you've probably seen the ups and downs of uh, the latest financial crisis. Uh, has this been a good investment destination for you, you think, and plausible going forward? I think uh, still it's uh, early days for me because it's not uh, like trading that you're buying and selling like stocks mm -hmm. and shares and whatever. I think uh, investment is art is a long-term proposition. You have to stay invested. And uh, there are two things. One is 
art for the sake of art. Well, I don't belong to that category. I say art for the sake of money. So at the long term, you want to make some money out of the art, but it's a long term investment. You have to hold on to it for some time. And then if you don't fall in love with the pieces that you're holding, then maybe you will sell it at some point of time and make money. Right. Alok, you're, you're a, a hardcore market person. Do you look at art in a similar way? I think I look at art uh, from two things, as what Ranjit also mentioned. Uh, art is obviously a, a means of uh, diversifying your investment base. So for those who believed only in equities or for others who only believed in real estate, both of these markets, as we've seen over the course of the past uh, 24 to 36 months, mm -hmm. have been extremely volatile. So yes, you've made millions and have uh, lost even more in uh, the ups and downs of the market. Whereas art, I believe, has uh, been fairly stable. Yes, it has not been completely immune, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, uh, from the swings and gyrations of uh, uh, investors. Mm -hmm. But I guess uh, at the same time, it has a, a far low probability of having uh, a downside vis-a-vis -vis, uh, pure equity or real estate or some of the other conventional investing tools. So I think art has a, a, a much better proposition for diversifying an investor's portfolio. It's a good point to bring in Renu here. Renu, you're someone who's been collecting art with a passion. It's it's unfair to call you someone who's been involved in art as a market. You, you launched your gallery in the early 1980s and you were a collector much before that. You've seen a lot of cycles, a lot of waves in the art market. How are you really expecting it to behave in 2010, considering uh, the latest records of SH Raza and Bharti Kher? Um, I look at art as really when you collect art, you buy art with, with a passion. Though with this high values, investments have started coming. Uh, people have started looking at art from the investment point of view. The market is reviving and things are looking up. But I think we need to do much more the auction. Just because a few works have sold at a very high price, we cannot just say that everything would, I mean, one would not go such so gung-ho about, about art in general. Though people are looking at art and the awareness has increased, we need to look at many other things. Like if I quote what, uh, like in the Forbes August 21, 2009 issue, there were studies by Barclays Capital and The Economist which showed that art outperformed both equities and property in both short and long period. But according to me, art which I bought maybe 20 years or 25 years back, for maybe a Hussein for 25,000, I mean, I have it would be now one and a half million US. So it's a question of a very long period if you are prepared to keep art from that point of view. Mm. Alok, a couple of interesting points raised by both Renu and uh, Rajiv as well. Uh, is it a respectable hedge against inflation? Can you treat it as something like gold where you just buy and keep it and play for appreciable value? Does it give you that kind of liquidity as an investor at tough times uh, given what the world has seen over the last two, two and a half years? I think art is not necessarily to be considered pure vis-a-vis -vis gold in terms of liquidity, safety and security. So I don't think necessarily it would be fair to compare art and gold. But I think art, as Renu again mentioned also, over a course of time, yes, it certainly would uh, uh, demonstrate that it has outperformed uh, various other uh, equities, uh, real estate, bullion, whatever other metrics we may use to judge it. So I think art has merit in its own, but it's, it's supposed to be part of a portfolio diversification rather than the mainstay because then you would effectively become an art collector mm -hmm. as against an investor in art. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Ranjeev, it was when you made your comment earlier saying that you got into art in 2008 but you've, uh, you've also learned how to appreciate the aesthetics of art which one really doesn't get to hear from a first time investor. One gets to hear that from a collector who's been doing that, who's been buying art for many years. So what really you give this confidence? I mean, how did you get into buying art in the first place? Well, getting into buying art was uh, thanks to my lot of investment advisors who keep coming to me and want to make me part with my money and invest in something or the other. And uh, then I read somewhere that you need to have a flavor of probably art and commodities and so on and so forth in your asset allocation. Looking around, I found that there were some art funds available, which were not very appealing, that you invest in something and then you go blank. You don't know what's happening inside the fund. And then somebody said that there is this uh, opportunity where Copal, uh, you invest, you get a piece of uh, art which you can hang on your wall in, a, in your office or home, and then at an appropriate time when you feel like selling it, you, so you actually owning that piece of art, which appealed to me. And I started small. And the Copal model was also quite different from uh, the others, uh, that 
you invested at a particular price in terms of per square foot, if you like. So it's like buying into real estate. And, and an artist, let's say Badri Narayan or Raza or somebody at a fixed price. And then from his art bank, you choose what you want. And you paid for it over a period of time. And then now you have these collections. And maybe when you want to sell, you can sell it. About. The visits to his uh, art bank is what really got me and my wife interested into looking at art from a different way. That's how the aesthetics portion comes. OK, let's take a break on that note. We've just about gotten started. There's lots more coming up on the other side, including where India stacks up in the global art market. We'll get you more perspective in just a couple of minutes when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still with Artwise on our first episode in conversation yet with uh, Renu Alok and Rajiv getting their thoughts on how to approach investing in the art market. Renu, uh, I was reading a report that said that the Indian market is just about half a percent of the global art market. Does that pr perhaps give us a significant opportunity to up the scales? Is there enough appetite, you think, in the Indian art market or is it just too expensive a proposition? No, I don't think that it's a, it's a, it's, I think it's a very good proposition and if you really look at the total art market we are just minuscule you forget the forget us and uk where the systems are in place collectors are in place let's compare india with china and the like like chinese art started with the not with the non chinese buying art and now it's such a strong homegrown market that there's amazing chinese collectors buying chinese art like crazy where which is missing in india and that's why that's where i and the and the gdp which this are saying which into th coming year it will be around 9% and the HNWI, you know, population also increasing, India getting so many more billionaires. I really feel it's a great, um, we have a great, I mean, to increase the art market or to grow the art market, we have great, great possibilities. Okay, uh, on that note, in fact, let's uh, let's uh, take a look at a story which is along similar lines. We just talk about, which, which does talk about uh, the Indian art market being a great opportunity. Thanks to a string of successes in global auctions, the Indian artists are no longer seen as second to their European or Chinese counterparts. But still, Indian art accounts for a negligible share of the global market. Experts hold that with India projected to emerge as the world's second largest economy in the coming decade, With rising appetite for arts among the new buyers, the true potential of Indian art is waiting to be unlocked. Now, looking into the global international market, the total market is 50 billion. We are also less than half a percent of that. So it is grossly undervalued. If you look into the national heritage all across the globe, there also the, the, the range is 150 million and we have only reached 0.5, you know, half a million you know, US dollars. Let's take a look at the top. 10 paintings in the global international scenario. They are in the range of 100 to 150 million, right? And the, our highest top five are in the range of 0.5 to 3.5 million. So the, the difference in the evaluation is they are 50 times costlier than us. But I think things are going to change now. You know, the way like Open has started its global art movement, we're launching this $250 million. There are many more people who have started understanding that Indian art is an opportunity. It is grossly undervalued. But it's not only undervalued, but it's an opportunity today, and that is why the interest is generating. Alok, listening to what uh, Ajay said and Renu Modi mentioned earlier about the Indian art being undervalued, uh, these records that have been broken in 2010, two records by S.H. Raza and Bharti Kher, do you, do, you, do you think that's something that's, uh, that's just happened or is, there, is it really a sign of green shoots? Do we really take it as a sign of green shoots? No, I think it's an interesting benchmark to have because uh, it shows that the Indian art market is now starting to actually become more uh, organized and there's a lot more active buyer interest from uh, people uh, such as uh, myself and others who have earlier did not have the opportunity or the means or the knowledge to invest into art even if we wanted to and thanks to uh, investors and 
firms such as Copal, where they've brought and broadened that market and made it more accessible to the common man or the layman who didn't.